Today I'll be discussing a patient with diabetes. It's part of early clinical exposure. This is a history of a 32-year-old man who is a known type 1 diabetic presenting to the emergency department with complaints of nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain of one day duration. Any patient with diabetes mellitus with abdominal pain plus minus vomiting, you should consider possibility of diabetic ketoacidosis. DKA can occur in type 1 and sometimes in type 2 at times of stress. So you should ask about any stress. Stress includes surgery, infections, etc. So coming to the rest of the physical examination and history. He reports increased thirst and increased urination. So they can say there is polyuria. And polydipsia. These are characteristic symptoms of diabetes mellitus and the reason is high blood sugar or hyperglycemia. High sugar leads on to osmotic diuresis. So the reason is here osmotic diuresis most likely the patient had skipped insulin. And this is this has produced a hyperglycemia and that has produced osmotic diuresis that led on to increased thirst. Coming to the examination, he is lethargic and dehydrated. He is self-explanatory and his vital signs temperature is 37.8, heart rate is 100, blood pressure is 100 by 60. Diabetic ketosis usually produces hypothermia. So, in no, even a normal temperature in a ketotic patient should be considered as evidence of infection and as I already told infection especially urinary tract infection pneumonia to notorious conditions that precipitates ketosis here the BP is lower side and you have to take a standing BP to see whether there is orthostatic hypotension and his pulse rate is 110 per minute suggesting the dehydration and hype might have produced a sympathetic response and has produced an increase in the heart rate. His breath is fruity water breath has, and has a dry mucous membrane. Dry mucous membrane is due to dehydration and the, the fruity smell is due to the smell of acetone. Acetone gives a fruity smell. And the breathing in ketosis is rapid and deep breathing. It is not only rapid, but it is deep breathing. It is called a air hunger. Don't confuse us. Rapid and shallow breathing. It is a rapid deep breathing. And this breathing is called Usmos breathing. Usmos breathing. So, clinical picture is consistent with the diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, we look into the investigation results. Pleasure is 380. The one of the criteria for diabetic ketosis is hyperglycemia, blood sugar more than 250. Here is undoubted hyperglycemia. And his ABG shows acidosis. That is the pH is less than 7.35, here it is 7.2, so there is a definitely acidosis. And this bicarbonate is 10, bicarbonate less than 15 is consistent with acidosis and as the bicarbonate has decreased, it is a type of metabolic acidosis. Hope you. 
understood this. Now we go into the elect lies. The serum potassium is 5.5 milliequivalents. Serum potassium in case of ketosis varies. In the initial period, it can the potassium can be elevated because acidosis produces hyperkalemia. Even in the presence of significant loss of potassium. Why the potassium is lost? When there is hyperglycemia, there is osmotic diuresis. Along with that potassium, there is a renal loss of potassium. So in ketosis, in the beginning, the potassium can be high even in the presence of significant body loss of potassium. But once you give administer insulin, this patient will go into hypokalemia. Because insulin will facilitate along with the glucose into the cell potassium enters potassium and glucose and this cell. That is why when the potassium is less than, serum potassium is less than 3.3, .3, administration of insulin infusion should be deferred. Correct the potassium and then only go for IV infusion of insulin. Now we look into serum sodium. Here the sodium is 138, normally is 135 to 145. Sometimes in hypoglycemia, you can get what is called a pseudo hyponatremia. That is, in the presence of hyperglycemia, an osmotically active substance, there will be the sodium, measured sodium will be low. The simple formula can be used, even though there may be some errors in this. That is, each 100 milligram blood sugar. Above normal, take it as 100 as a normal value. Sodium will be 1.6 milliequivalents low in the presence of hyperglycemia. For example, here there is 380, so 280 milligrams of glucose is above the normal, that is 100 milligram. So 1.6 into 2.8 or approximately you can say 4.8 milliequivalents of sodium has to be added to 138 to identify the corrected sodium. So the formula is the measured glucose minus 100 into 1.6 divided by 100. This is how you calculate the corrected sodium. Here the serum amylase and lipase was done which is within normal limits. Why should you check the lipase and amylase? In case of ketosis, the enzyme, pancreatic enzymes are may be elevated little. In the absence of definite evidence of pancreatitis or a significant increase in the serum lipase, without that should not make a diagnosis of pancreatitis. And in case of doubt or a minimal elevation of lipase, you should go for CT scan or other imaging. And the urine showed glucose and ketones. So our patient have got three cardinal findings. One is hyperglycemia, more than 250. Evidence of acidosis as evidenced by low pH and decrease in the bicarbonate. And he has got ketone, ketoneuria. So the diagnosis of diabetic ketosis depends upon hyperglycemia, acidosis and ketonemia. You may substitute ketonuria for ketonemia. 
Examination of glucose in the urine is important because there are conditions where without hyperglycemia you can get ketosis. And the urine sugar may be absent. Typical example is pregnancy, hypermesis, gravidarin leading on to starvation ketosis. Starvation ketosis. Another condition you should keep in mind is the euglycemic ketosis. Euglycemic ketosis. That is with the normal sugar you can get ketosis. One condition is SG. LT2 administration. The mechanism we will discuss in another session. So th these are the investigations that you will be planning. So in this session we have discussed how will you make a diagnosis of diabetic ketosis and how will you explain the symptomatology that is seen in diabetic ketosis that is increased thirst, polydipsia, changes in electrolytes. Next session we will discuss the pathophysiology of fetoacidosis. Hope it was useful to you. Thank you.